I actually think this is the 15th time I've tried to film this video. I'm getting weird, it's that time of night. Hi guys, welcome to another Makeup Made Easy video. In this series that I'm starting, I'm taking a different product, aspect of makeup, and I'm going to break it down, make it super easy to understand, and give you all of my tips and tricks from my perspective as a bridal makeup artist, all so that makeup is less intimidating and more enjoyable. So in this video, we are going to be talking all about setting powders and setting spray, and why you need to add these two things into your makeup routine if you aren't already using them. My name is Ashley, and like I said, I am a bridal makeup artist and hairstylist. You can find my work here. And full time, I am a social worker. So I started this channel because I am super passionate about empowering other people to feel capable and confident. Even if that starts with something as simple as makeup or the way that we talk to ourselves, I wanna talk about it and I wanna challenge you to do that in your life as well. So make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already so that you can join this little community that I'm trying to build here on YouTube and so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I post every Friday at 6 p.m. unless I have major technical issues and you actually upload on Mondays and not Fridays like you did last week, but hopefully I upload every Friday at 6 p.m. Let's get into the reason you're here. All right, we are going to start with setting powders. This is going to be in the theme of my whole Makeup Made Eerie. Makeup Made Easy series is we're just doing the basics. So I'm going to say this once. I'm going to try not to say it the rest of the video. There's a lot more than what I'm about to talk about. I just want to cover the basics for you. There's other ways to use setting powder. There's baking. There's listen, there's just other ways. Okay. I'm going to talk about the main ways I use it, the main way I use it on my clients. And if you want more information, I can do another video another time. So that's it. That's my disclaimer and I'm moving on. Okay. Listen, let me ask you a question. Are you spending time in the morning on your makeup? Even if it's five minutes, if your answer is yes, here's my second question. Are you using a setting spray or a setting powder? If your answer is no, then I'm going to tell you why you need to add them into your routine. Okay. Why would you spend time on your makeup to then have it come off later in the day? You are wasting your time if you are doing that. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Using these two things will help to make your makeup last all day. And it's very easy. Number one, we are using a setting powder anytime we are putting cream or liquid on our face. That could be cream or liquid foundation. That could be a cream or liquid concealer, blush, whatever it is. If it's a cream, or a liquid you need, you should, you can <laughs> put a setting powder on top of it to make it stay in place. If you are someone that only wears concealer, maybe you just touch up under your eyes or you're touching up a pimple, you still need to set that spot with a setting powder. Now, saying that, some foundations, some concealers are what we call self-setting. The way to tell is after you put it on, wait five, 10 minutes, and then touch your foundation or touch your concealer. If it's still kind of tacky and a little bit sticky, it is not self-setting. If you touch it and it doesn't feel tacky or sticky and it feels like dry, then that's self-setting and you don't have to put powder on top of it. So that's how you'd know the difference between self-setting and not so all, we always put it on after we've put on all of our cream products. Right now I have on foundation, concealer, a cream contour, and a cream blush, and a cream highlight. <laughs> And I need to set it with powder or else it's going to move around. If you are someone with oily skin, you definitely should add a setting powder to your routine if you don't have it already. And I'm just going to talk about two types of setting powders today. The most popular one is translucent setting powders and the other is a pigmented setting powder. Meaning if you put it on, it's not just going to like blend in. It's got some pigment to it. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush <laughs> Flawless Finish Powder. If I take this powder and put it on the skin of someone with a deeper skin tone than me. So you can see that right there on my hand. If I put that on someone that has even a little bit tanner than me you're gonna see that powder because it's got some pigment to it. Whereas if I used this powder, which is a translucent setting powder, I'm gonna link everything in the description box below. 
I don't know. But I take that powder and I put it on the back of my hand, just blend it right in. Not all translucent powders are for everybody. So they say translucent, but for people with deeper skin tones, some translucent setting powders that they say are for everybody, they're lying. It's not. <laughs> there are setting powders that truly do work for everybody. And then there are setting powders that you definitely need to make sure you're getting the right shade. So translucent setting powders, most people I would say use a translucent setting powder because they don't really want to change the appearance. They don't want to add more coverage, which is what something like this is going to do um, if it has pigment in it. If you either have dry skin like me or maybe you have more mature skin and powders make you feel or it ages your skin a little bit because powders can settle into the like fine lines on our face and you're like, I will not ever touch a setting powder totally understand I have dry skin I used to never ever use setting powders before that reason because powder will really accentuate dryness and fine lines and if done incorrectly it's not a cute look you can apply it all over or you can apply it where you need it so let's say I'm using a self-setting foundation and I am using a concealer that's not self-setting I'll only use it there so here's what we're gonna do like I said I have foundation already on my face it's been like 30 minutes and it's still sticky so that's how I know I need to put some powder on my face now this is my favorite translucent setting powder it is the hourglass veil translucent setting powder it is amazing it is expensive and I'm a sucker for it okay and I keep buying it because just I love it so much so what we're gonna do is we are going to shake some out I like to put it in my lid. You can put it right in here. I don't know. Before I put my powder on, I make sure to take my damp sponge. This is the e.l.f. sponge and it is by far my favorite sponge I've ever used. Do not buy a $20, a $20 beauty blender. Can you believe people have spent $20 on a sponge that looks like this. If you're that person, there's no judgment here because I've bought many a beauty blender, but I have to say once I've tried this, I'm not going back. Before I put on my powder, I make sure to get all of the excess cream off of my face. So I just kind of go over and especially under my eyes. Now, if you missed my last video, go check it out because I talk about my new technique on how I do powder and set spray under my eyes to completely help with under eye lines and wrinkles. Bottom line, less is more, especially if you have dry skin. If you have oily skin, I still say less is more because you can always build it up. It can be really challenging to tone it down. So we do not want our face to look cakey. We don't want it to look obvious that we have powder on our face. Okay, so that is why we'd start with less. Uh, you can use a brush or you can use a sponge. You can use a small brush like this. You can use a big fluffy brush like this. It's all personal preference. I do something different every time, okay? Uh, if someone has very oily skin, I definitely use a more compact brush because it's easier to pack it on and really work the powder into the skin. If I have dry skin and I just wanna do kind of a light dusting, I'll use kind of a bigger, fluffier brush like this. I'm gonna take a little bit on my brush, tap it off because I don't want too much. And I am just going to start lightly buffing this into my skin and I'm like pressing into my skin because I want it to get in there and then the way you tell is if I'm touching it and it feels dry basically you don't want it to feel sticky so I'm gonna get a little bit more I'm like pressing it into my skin because I really want to press that foundation in I do not want it to go anywhere make sure you get in like those the nooks and crannies. I feel like a who when I make that face. Make sure you stay until the end because I am going to show you what I do, especially for people with dry skin, but for anybody to make sure that your face doesn't look cakey and really built up with powder. Now I'm gonna show you how you can use a sponge. So simple, just dip it in to your powder and you just press it in. Okay, so feels pretty good. My nephew says that. 
You go, hey, how you doing? He goes, pretty good. <laughs> so shout out to him. Pretty good. That's how I'll know if my brother watched this video. This kid. Pretty good. <laughs> Let's say you're oily and many people get oily in their T-zone. This is your T-zone in case you didn't know. So I'm gonna take some of that. I'm gonna take a little bit more, pretend I'm really oily. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pat it and roll your brush a little, just to really, really work it into the skin. And, and again, if you're oily, take your time with this because you're really working it in and helping it settle into your pores. So for, for people with oily skin, powder is amazing and it can like really elevate your makeup look. Okay, so that is it for setting powder. It's really that simple. Now let's skip to the end of our makeup routine and finish with a setting spray. Once you finish putting your setting powder on, then you can finish the rest of your makeup. So I just added bronzer, blush, and highlight. So here's what we've done. We finished our makeup. We're about to walk out the door. We take our setting spray. We close our eyes. We hold it out because you don't want to get like splotches on your face. And then we dry it. And then we're done. You can't tell me you don't have time for your setting spray. Those five seconds are gonna make your makeup last hours longer. Urban Decay All Nighter is what I use on all of my brides. I don't wear this every day because it just dries my skin out a little bit more. Um, I love the Morphe Continuous Setting Spray. That mist is delicious. It's beautiful. Um, I will use MAC Fix Plus to set it. <sighs> there are so many drugstore ones that are great. Milani has great ones. Bottom line, just get you one. So here is the super easy fix to that. After you take the brush and you dust as much of the excess powder away, so you can take a setting spray. I'm using MAC Fix Plus. You can use a rose water. Highly recommend MAC Fix Plus though, I love this. I just put it in a different bottle for my kit. So that's why it looks like this. Make sure you have a sponge nearby and I am going to lightly spray and then press in all over my face, so. So we are just adding moisture back into our face and that moisture is gonna help soak up some of that powder. The easiest, but one of the best tricks to making your makeup elevated and look more professional is making sure it doesn't look too powdery and caked on. Oh, I should probably do an outro. All right, and that is it. It is that simple. Powder your face when you need to, use a setting spray and see how long your makeup can last. Ooh. Hi, come here. <laughs> Is she not the most precious thing you've ever seen? <laughs> Should that be my thumbnail? <laughs> I guess that's it. It's a quick video. I'm sure I have an hour worth of footage.